For anybody who has a little bit of interest in history, it's actually one of the things that can really spark your interest a little bit more, get you involved. And it's really been a great community project for us as well. As we've started, and again, this being the 150th um, year anniversary of Gettysburg, part of the Battle of Gettysburg, um, and some other things in our history, it's really caused our community to dig into things and take ownership. And that's, they're going to talk a little bit today, too. That's part of what this is, is about taking ownership. The Pennsylvania uh, Hallowed Ground Project is a volunteer effort that honors the Commonwealth's United States Colored Troops by helping caretakers and interested public in conserving the cemeteries and grave sites where these folks are interned. Uh, case studies from across the Commonwealth uh, have been presented uh, on successful projects to honor those veterans and tell important stories about our community and our history of the community. And once you start digging into this history, the history that's not in our textbooks, it's amazing what you can find. <clears throat> and there's a local story that I started digging and some things that has come to me and it's become uh, an individual now, it's just sort of like a hero of mine. His name was Jacob Compton. And you're not gonna read this in too many stories, but Jacob Compton, was a local businessman here in Harrisburg, and he had a, a, a carriage ride business. And when Lincoln was on his way to D.C. from uh, the winning of the election, on his way down to be sworn in as president, he made his stops and he was coming through here. And when he came to Harrisburg, to spend the night in Harrisburg, uh, his security agent, Pinkerton, which is a familiar name to us now, had gotten word that there was a group of folks that were going to attempt to assassinate the president. So they worked around and they found a reluctant young businessman, African-American businessman, by the name of Jacob Compton to take Abraham Lincoln out of Harrisburg in the still of the night and save what was going on with King, the one of our more famous presidents. And I think back about that time and you have a young man who knew that he was putting his own life in his own danger um, to take the president out because there was a group of folks wanting to kill him. And they, he knew full well, especially with his skin color, if he was caught, he was a dead man too. And I often think about if he would have not put his, the, 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 the will of the country ahead of himself, what would happen? What would history have been like if Abraham Lincoln had died here in the city of Harrisburg? Those little types of things and you know, projects like this that will really highlight um, things in your community that make, and, and we've done this with our local folks, and have brought history back to life uh, here in, in the capital city. Lenwood Sloan, Lenwood is the uh, co-founder co of PA Hallowed Grounds. Lenwood is actually someone I've known uh, for a while and has been quite involved with, with a lot of history. Linwood received the 2013 Distinguished School Award uh, from the Pennsylvania Humanities Council for his service to the Commonwealth. And in that service, he had served six years as the Director of Cultural and Heritage Programs. He had served two years in the, uh, as in the Pennsylvania Film Commissioner and the Film Tax Credit. And Linwood's just a, a walking in as encyclopedia. She is uh, one of the, the co-founders of Hallowed Grounds, Pennsylvania Hallowed Grounds as well. Uh, Brenda Barrett is filling in. Brenda is the editor of Living Landscape Observer. It's a website and monthly newsletter providing commentary on land conservation, historic preservation, and sustainable communities. The commissioner is quite modest. He is, in fact, the honorary chair of Freedom Jubilee, a year-long commemoration. This is the fifth year of the multi-year commemoration of the sesquicentennial of the Civil War. And it took us five years to be able to say that. In about year three, the words sesquicentennial of the Civil War were contracted to Civil War 150. But we were actually at the third critical benchmark called the Jubilee. A Jubilee is a 50 year period. In 1911, we had the first Jubilee. Unfortunately, it was at the time of the Jim Crow law. And unfortunately, it was at the time that the New York Times was 
publishing things called Coon Shouts. So we didn't do too well that year. Then came the second jubilee, sir, in 1961, that Martin Luther King was in the streets. We were beginning our civil rights period. And again, we didn't do too well on America and the Civil War. So here we arrive at 2015, and Jeff Hayes has given us an opportunity, 32 organizations across the Commonwealth, many in your communities, to help articulate an open dialogue on Pennsylvania and the Civil War. And we're here to talk about one important aspect of that dialogue. When, uh, this is our mission, when Abraham Lincoln uh, asked Congress for permission for soldiers, he imagined that the Civil War would only last 90 days. So he asked for 75,000 soldiers for 90 days. In fact, sir, one of the biggest riots was 90 days later, only two blocks from where we are standing, where the soldiers said, I want to go home, it's harvest time. I want my money, it's time for me to go. He had to then come up with a new plan, sorry, had to come up with a new plan for the recruitment of soldiers. And that new plan involved two things, a draft and a concept called substitution. Substitution was if your husband, your son, your lover did not want to go to war, he could get someone to substitute for him for $300 and take his place uh, in the substitution. As a result of the draft and the substitution, Hundreds of thousands of men came forward in the five years of the war. And by 1863, and at the end of the Battle of Gettysburg, in general, and then the November to be exact, it was important for the nation to stop and place a hollowed ground for these men, particularly the men who had fallen, Union and Confederate at Gettysburg. This is the gatehouse of Gettysburg. We know that a woman came out on the second day of the battle and began to bury it. She was the first to bury it at the National Cemetery. We know that Governor Curtin went on July 10th of 1863 to Gettysburg. We know that the stench was so great that he could smell the land seven miles before he got there. We know that he contracted these gentlemen, an important team. On your right at the bottom is Solomon Weaver, uh, the Jewish coroner. He had to distinguish whether the body was an animal or human. Above him is Frederick Baysaker, and Frederick Baysaker got the contract from the federal government to bury bodies at the National Cemetery at $1.25 a body, provided that Solomon said, this is not a cow, this is actually a human being. The African Americans in this picture are Basil Biggs and his sons. They shared the $1.25 with Basic. They actually did the work of taking the soldier where he had fallen and interring him or her into the National Cemetery. The National Cemetery, unfortunately, was a segregated site. Uh, in November of 1863, when we established the, the National Cemetery, and despite the fact that Basil Biggs and his family uh, buried 1,100 bodies by the time Lincoln spoke, and, and also 5,000 bodies by the end of the war, black soldiers were not allowed to be buried in the National Cemetery. In fact, the sad part of the story is that the first black soldier that was buried there uh, caused such a riot that the white families dug up their soldiers around his grave. 180,000 black men fought for the Union cause. They were proud black men. Pennsylvania had 11 regiments totaling 18,000 soldiers 
of the 180,000 alone. In fact, we went to war before we went to war. This is Nicholas Biddle. On April 9th, when the war broke out in 1861, Biddle, a militia from uh, Pottstown, went with his uh, master, uh, a soldier, and went into Baltimore, and his crew get, uh, created this uniform for him because he was not allowed to wear a United States uniform. But in those five years, 40,000 African Americans were in the Navy, 180,000 African Americans uh, were in the Army. This is the brilliant Martin Delaney. And Mr. Martin Delaney achieved uh, the only officer regulation of a major, and he is decorated and one of the Medal of Honor winners. Families across Pennsylvania and across the nation, African American families, freedmen, agreed to put on Union uniforms and go south despite the fact that there was a bounty on their heads. They earned their right to freedom, and yet they had no hollow grounds to be buried. Barbara.